Hello there, my Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your soulmate reading for January 2020, though timeless. Whenever you're watching, it is cool. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, now for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, and president of Drawing the Circle Productions. I'm very, very happy to be reading for you today. And by the way, I am Leo Rising. I no longer try to keep myself out of these readings. Why? It's impossible. I don't know how other readers do it, but eh, there you go. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. If you are new to my channel, please do like and subscribe. I'm making my way to 1,000 subscribers. I'm not that far away, actually. So then, you know, if I get the right number of views, I think it is, I'm able to monetize, which will be fun, but I'm really looking forward to doing super live chat. I am Leo Rising. Ooh, another venue, right? Where people can tip me, which is just a lovely idea. Uh, uh, so, if you please help me reach my goal, I've made a promise to my subscribers that once a month for the first couple of months or so, I will do a little ditty, not about Jack and Diane, about drunk tarot. And I made a video last year uh, about it in December, clarifying drunk tar tarot. The link is in the description box below. And it is, by the way, my favorite video of uh, 2019. I cracked myself up. I'll probably watch it again. Uh, tonight. So really, uh, help out. <laughs> help a witch out. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, a couple of things before we get into the reading. This is a general read, right? So please take what resonates leaves, <clears throat> what doesn't, which is why I do Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs when I do um, zodiacal reads so that you can get uh, other pieces of the mystical puzzle, right? Life is a mystery. Everyone must stand alone. And then they meet their soulmate, and the work continues, right? So uh, please do check your other signs, and uh, keep in mind that this is a soulmate read. Uh, but soulmates are essentially soul contracts. There are many different kinds, but there's twin flame and soulmate are the ones most people know about. They are not the same contract at all. Like, all. Uh, the soulmate contract, the bottom line, is that you help each other heal, and it can come in any form. In other words, the romantic, uh, sexual, intimate form, which is what these readings are about, uh, are not the only form. My mother and I are soulmates, no question. We help each other heal. That's the bottom line. You help each other heal. Where at Twin Flame, you teach each other how to heal yourselves. <laughs> you teach each other how to love yourself. <laughs> because they can't really give you the love you want, <laughs> so you have to give it to yourself. And that's why I do a whole separate set of reads on that. I'll probably do that uh, series after the next one, which I'm going to do probably uh, the What Do I Need reads from, I guess we're going to uh, Full Moon to New Moon next? So oh, New Moon to Full Moon next, yeah. So keep in mind, yes, this is a soulmate contract read. We're going to be looking at the contract between two people, uh, divine feminine, divine masculine, just to delineate who is who. It has nothing to do with bodily gender. It's about energetic dynamic. You'll have to figure out who you are intuitively. Um, but that these readings, though, soulmates come in any form. Uh, this is about the happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, sexual, intimate, romantic uh, contract. So we're going to be looking at a contract, not just two people, but the overall contract itself. I was raised by a lawyer, a divorce lawyer of all things. I love how they call them matrimonial lawyers. It's like, they ain't getting nobody married. Uh, but he married my mom. <laughs> Zeus, as I like to call him. So I was raised in a litigious environment. I know how to look over a contract, usually, you know. So uh, that being said, right, the divine masculine, divine feminine thing, please remember to breathe. You can tell already I'm speeding up. Uh, actually, last night I did a, a open readings at Yogaholic in Cinema Riches, and I read over 20 people. I don't remember it. I mean, I do, but I don't. So I'm, like, wide open. I'm like the balloon after the air has been let out the next day, just sort of whoo, kind of woogly, but in a good way. Like, I prayed, I grounded, I centered. Mm. I've got my wonder java. I am fine uh, and ready to rock and roll. But the more I can be aware of my breath as I go, it's going to calm me, center me, bring me to that still point where spirit lives and give me the clearest uh, ability to give the clearest reading that I can for you. And if you are doing the same, you're being in the present moment, grounded, anchored into the now, however you want to see that, but also tuning to the same frequency because it's available to you in the now, right? It doesn't matter time and space. Cool, cool. That's why this is a timeless read. Let's have fun with this. Let's time travel. Let's not. Take a nice deep breath. 
All the decks that I use are in the description box below. I think you'll like the spread. I get a kick out of it. I've been doing it for clients too, so face-to-face uh, -face and uh, on Facebook Messenger and stuff. I think you'll get a kick out of it. So take a nice deep breath, my Leos. Here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, please. Uh, two cards, one for the Divine Feminine and one for the Divine Masculine in this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, sexual, intimate, romantic, soulmate contract for January 2020, timestamp, but timeless, whenever they're supposed to see it, please. So one card first for the Divine Feminine, there she is, and one card next for the Divine Masculine, there he is. That was pretty painless. Usually it's a... It's a longer shuffle, right, to get them. Let's see. Who's our happy soulmate couple? Oh, we've got the Divine Feminine as the mystic and the Divine Masculine as the seeker. Wow. Very happy to be a Leo rising right at this moment because I am a Divine Feminine <laughs> mystic. See what I mean about it? It's not about bodily gender, really, when it comes to my spirituality. I mean, I'm a witch. I'm a goddess worshiper, right? If you mean ever met my mother, you'd know why I'm a goddess worshiper. I love, I love you. I call her Hera, right? It's not her real name. <laughs> Obviously, she just likes her privacy. She's a Cancerian. Um, but I can so relate to this. And again, I, I've given up trying to keep myself out of the readings. It's too much mental gymnastics. I resonate with this. But oh my God, you give me a divine masculine seeker. Oh, what fun can be had. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to read both of these cards individually, giving you the shadow and the light, the lead and the gold, because the the archetypes are important because they really do delineate each individual person in the soul contract. But because it's a soulmate contract that you help each other heal, these are the things that you are going to help each other heal, right? So it's just good to know ahead of time. Uh, so here we go. The the shadow side of the mystic archetype, and I have the mystic lifelong. Uh, delusional rapport with the divine, which absolutely, you know, the word Koresh comes to mind, right? Uh, the gods told me to do it. I mean, I have stories from the New Age 90s that would make your hair straighten, stand on end, and then recurl again like a... Like a, a Ogilvy, <laughs> like an Ogilvy home perm. Yikes. Flashback to the 90s, the 80s of the 90s. So, um, you know, like I've seen some crazy shit in my spiritual career, in the spiritual industry. And don't kid yourself, it's a fucking industry and has been for a long time, right? Expos and, and things like that. Um, so I have seen some, woo, crazy. And believe me, madness is part of mysticism. Sometimes you're, n you're not m mad. I don't mean angry, like um, mad hatter kind of mad. Because you see things from the divine perspective and you see how crazy this world is, how backwards things are. And to others, you appear, you appear mad. Um, but that's why I have a background in psychology. Forever young, I want to be forever young, hence the archetypes, right? So if you're the divine feminine this, or you're the cross watcher, dealing with the divine feminine uh, mystic, that delusional pour with the, with the divine, everybody goes through that. But then, you know, if stigmata starts showing up and you start like levitating and shit and bilocating, it's good to have a soulmate who might possibly be into those sort of things like a seeker. And it's okay, honey, you need a cup of coffee. Yes, all five of me in five different locations. Uh, the light attribute revels in intimate union with the divine. Do you know how, how easy it would be for my heart to just become a mystic, go behind walls and never leave the house and just pray all day long? Reveling in intimate, I mean reveling in intimate union with the divine. It is true love. Oh my God, there are times where I go into prayer and meditation where I cry tears of love for the divine. So let's just say I, I, I'm trying not to project, but it's too late. I don't think I'm projecting. I think I'm extending. There's a difference. Um, so Course in Miracles. Let's have a look at the Divine Masculine Seeker. Who I wonder who this is. The shadow attribute. Inability to commit to a path once found. Great. Mm. Been there, done that. Have uh, I was going to say the skid marks, but boy, does that have different connotations nowadays. Um, and we know that, right? When people like find something, it's like, oh, I found what I've been seeking. What else you got, right? 
Keep in mind, though, this is the mystic is the divine family of archetypes, and the seeker is the wisdom family of archetypes. So it's a really, really good coupling there, but the shadow on both sides. One's like cuckoo bananas, and the other one can't commit to shit. So in the shadow side of any archetype, it sucks. They're supposed to suck. It's the shadow, the lead, the toxicity, yet has to be embraced, loved, and healed, alchemized. Uh, the light attribute of the seeker, however, thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. Oh, be still, my beating heart, my beautiful Leo rising leonine yummy yummy heart. Oh, to someone who has a thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. Oh my God, for a witch in particular. Like, I don't need to be with a witch. Another witch doesn't always work out the way you think it's going to, two magical beings together. But I know the Samantha Stevens contract isn't going to work for me. Like, I, I just, I really, really don't think a Darren would work for me. But, you know, whatever the gods want is what I will do. Because these are pre-incarnational contracts. You're going to meet them sooner or later. Because uh, of all the soulmate contracts that we have, it's the romantic ones, the romantic, intimate, sexual ones that have been the most troublesome because romance has not always existed on the planet, right? It was like survival for much, much longer and still is on the planet, survival that way. Hence codependence, these things that were necessary back when we were hunters and gatherers. We're undoing all of that stuff moving into the fifth dimension. So this is a really, really, really cool thing for my Leos. I'm very excited for you all. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take three cards, simple timeline, past, present, future, uh, f uh, using the Daughters of the Moon Tarot for the Divine Feminine Mystic. Same thing, simple timeline, past, present, future for the Divine Masculine with the Mythic Tarot. Juliet Sharman Burke. Oh, Juliet Sharman Burke. I'm going to start saying that. Uh... <laughs> Great Caesar's ghost. Kelly Clarkson, right? I'm going to start saying Juliet Sharman Burke. <laughs> I read 20 plus people last night. As I said, it was a really good time. Yogaholic in uh, Cinema Riches. We're going to be doing it again. It was our first time doing stuff there. So much fun. I Leo rising the fuck out of myself last night. It was very, it had very moving moments too. There were some tears towards the end, but they were healing te tears. It was rough, but it was great. Ready? Nice deep breath. Ah, oh, the voices of the goddess. For the divine feminine, please. My goddesses, three cards. Past, present, future for the divine feminine mystic. In this Leo collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Satisfying, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Romantic, intimate, sexual, soulmate contract for January 2020. Where is she now? Oh, sorry, where has she been? Where has she been on the in this contract? Where is she now in this contract? And this one too, where is she going? Uh, that's the past, present, future, how they asked me to phrase it. Uh, where have they been? Where are they now? Where are they going? We're going to do the same for the Divine Masculine here. Nice deep breath. Oh, feels so good. See, when I'm breathing, I'm actually breathing the energy of the contract, and because I'm a Leo rising, it's like, I feel it more, that's why. <clears throat> that's exactly why they're saying, why it's hard to separate. The energy of it is flowing through me. <sighs> oh, the gods, please, the voice of the gods, Leo in particular, please, uh, Apollo in particular for Leo. Three cards, past, present, future. For the Divine Masculine Seeker. In this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Satisfying soulmate, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, romantic, intimate, sexual contract for January 2020 or timeless. Where has he been on the path? Where has he been in this uh, soulmate contract? Where is he now in this soulmate contract? Where is he going? In this, whoop, no, too many. I would have taken it. I would have taken it and it would have been lovely, but send it around again. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Where is he going? So he's going to take a little bit more time getting to this one, I feel, than the Divine Feminine. Where is he headed in this soulmate contract? January 2020. Timeless. Hmm. Sorry. Virgo. <laughs> All right, where has she been? Ooh, Five of Pentacles, Earthquake. Now, Five of Pentacles, you know, two people outside of the church or the temple in the snow hobbling through. 
it's about physical change, but in this deck, I love Daughters of the Moon, it's the earthquake. So it happened very quickly, right? A quick shake-up. And it is a minor arcana, so it does make sense. It's a thing you go through, a thing that happens. So most earthquakes are less than 10 seconds. I mean, but then there are aftershocks later, but the initial thing, it's particularly if it's a big one, they don't have to be very long to change everything. So it's sort of like, I consider this the tower card of the minor arcana, right? But very physical, physical change can be lost, but can be gained, right? Uh, win the lottery, a scratch off, that's a five of pentacles, right? So people always want to put it in the shadow side of it. It can be both, obviously, but that's why we have a timeline. What comes of that? Where is she now? The three of flames in this deck, the three of wands, loyalty, literally says it on the deck, L-O, loyalty, can I not spell loyalty? Oh my god, you know the word. So uh, that thing not just of waiting, but like lighting a candle in the window and like holding your focus and having uh, not an agenda, but almost like a pecking order, right? Because loyal, you can't give 100% loyalty to everyone and everything all the time, right? So for myself, it's the gods first, the divine, then me, then friends and family, uh, then work. But keep in mind, I learned that because what we're taught is work, then friends and family, then self, and then the divine. Like, now I lay me down to sleep, I ask the Lord my soul to keep. And what a terrifying prayer to teach children. Yes, it was one of the prayers I said. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, but it was through Iyanla Van Zant. You know Iyanla. Iyanla, I want her to do a show called Iyanla. Iyanla saved my ass, right? <laughs> I love her. I uh, would love to meet her. I'd love to meet everybody eventually, but don't meet your teachers. It doesn't always go well. Don't meet your heroes. Um, but that's where I learned that from, right? So, so there's a prioritization here for the Divine Feminine, particularly as a mystic, right? It's like, keep your loyalty to yourself, girl, in the sense of keep to your path, keep to your practice. Not about spiritual obedience, being a good little Divine Feminine so that the gods will give me what I want someday. No, 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 no. To stay congruent, to keep it together, to be loyal to your path, because... If you are a mystic, <clears throat> you know you have to walk the high road. So there's something here about even being loyal uh, to, to God to self, but then to the friend and family, whoever this uh, uh, divine masculine is to you, whether you've met or not, but also be loyal to the contract. That's where she is right now. Where is she headed? Oh, bitch. I'm so happy. Ten of Cups. You don't fucking want Ten of Cups. Inanna's House of Heaven. Now keep in mind, Inanna has to do with embracing the shadow. Look it up. Read the myth. She got a sister, Arishkagul, and all of that. She got to embrace her shadow in the underworld, right? So it's interesting. This is what happens after the embracing of the shadow. That bliss, like being pulled down into the underworld like a arrow on a bow and then <laughs> released once the shadow has been integrated. So powerful. That's the card you're looking for in a soulmate thing. This feels really, really good. I'm really, really happy for us. I'm the Divine Feminine Mystic. Seeker, who has time to seek? <laughs> for the Divine Masculine, where has he been? Well, Nine of Cups. Interesting. So this might be somebody who is uh, was in a relationship already, something a bit more romantic, because it is where they have been. Now, where has he been in this contract? Perhaps these feelings have been going on for a long time. Maybe they have known each other for a while. But the nine, they're still reading the vows. They haven't hit the I do yet. Do you know what I mean? Like, the bouquet has not been thrown. The rings have not been exchanged. Now, I love the Nine of Cups, so often called the Wish Fulfillment card. And yes, that perhaps this uh, Divine Masculine Seeker has sought and found this Divine Feminine Mystic, and their prayers have been answered, right? Their wishes have been fulfilled. It's a really nice reading. Well, let's see where he is now, right? Seekers, right? The issue with commitment. Ooh, girl, Hakate, the moon. Ooh. Well, <laughs> let's just say the unconscious mind is moving through the subconscious mind for the divine masculine, and there are some emotions coming up. Look, divine masculines don't always deal well with the element of water. It's just how it is. They're air and fire, right? They're thought and desire. It's the divine feminines that usually more typify the uh, earth and water, the body and the emotion. But we all have both within us, right? It's like we are fluid in, in that sense, yin and yang and all of that uh, intellect 
intuition, right brain, left brain, all that kind of stuff. So uh, just even tuning lightly into this for the divine mask, and it's like, what's going on? <laughs> what, like, my wish has been fulfilled, but now it's like this divine door of intuition, and there absolutely is some emotional confusion as a result of it, because maybe tuning into more uh, of the divine energy involved in this contract, for example. Ooh, and I'm getting an interesting little pain in my head here. If you're the divine masculine, don't overthink it. <sighs> Breathe. Yeah, like even my shoulders tensed up on that one. It's not your responsibility to find the reason for it, divine masculine seeker, although I know that thirst for truth. What is this? What is this? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? This is an intuitive card. Ask yourself, get in your body. How does it feel? How does it feel? Well, I'm a little scared. Well, okay, what kind of scared is it? It's like, uh, uh, it's excited scared if you go there, but some tricky shit. Where is he headed? Ah, uh, see, the Seven of Swords. A little sneaky, sneaky. All right. Excuse me while I refresh. The Seven of Swords, we know it's like trying to get away with shit, right? Not the only interpretation of the card, but this one in particular, he's sneaking away by, by nighttime with all of the swords, you know, and the Rider Waite Tarot kind of forgets to. Not this one. Uh, perhaps sneaking away, perhaps a little bit of ghosting activity. I hope not. Ghosting is wicked fucking cowardly. Uh, but if you can relay and communicate, I just need some space. But then it would be like the Hermit card, right? There are other cards. Even the Eight of Cups can be done in a therapeutic way. What are the positive aspects of the Seven of Swords? Sometimes it's about having a strategy. Sometimes it's about, okay, if I have to be covert to get this done, if I have to extricate myself, but remember it is a mental card, thought, air, swords. Uh, so it can be the trying, again, a seeker, trying to seek a way through or perhaps to something. Mm. I don't know so much that it's sneaking away. This is a soulmate contract. But then again, with the card of the moon there, he can be hit with so much divine vibration of unity, love, that it might bring up his shit and he might need to kind of like disappear for a little while to deal with that. And you know what? If that's what he needs to do, that's what he needs to do. Sometimes you're not running from, you're running to. It's just you think you are running from, but you're running to, right? Right? Aw, thankfully we have more cards. That's our, our timelines there. Very interesting reading and very real, real. Like, I feel like these two might have known each other before, um, might be in each other's lives, but even with that sense of, of the Three of Wands for the Divine Feminine Mystic, right? That loyalty, like sticking to the path. No, like, honey, stick to the path no matter what he does. Because if it's a soulmate contract, you're going to help each other heal anyway. So you heal you. And you're headed towards ecstasy. So you keep doing what you're doing. But it feels like he's headed towards a, something else. But sometimes the most, the most circuitous paths, right? Circuitous, like a circuit, brings us back. Have to take the hero's journey on this one. But it has to do it on the sneaky sneaky. Or maybe it has to be a little clandestine for the two of them to be together, which could be that as well. I wonder... Well, okay. <clears throat> From the guides, they're saying, yes, of course, there are people where in, in the collective here, the Leo collective, where the divine masculine is still attached to somebody and has to get the fuck out. Divine feminine mystic, probably with that loyalty card, is not going to be a third person. Not a third party thing. Mystics can't really afford it. Trust me, been there, done that. Have the, the broken heart chips in a vase somewhere. Let's take a nice deep breath. We're going to talk to the angels for a celestial overview. Working with the Healing with the Angels Oracle by Doreen Virtue. In other words, the angels are going to tell us what are the healing angels, the healing energies you are bringing to the contract, both for the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. Ready? Nice deep breath. My angels, please. Two cards, one for the Divine Feminine, one for the Divine Masculine. What are the healing angels? What they're healing with the angels. What are the angels they are healing with in this? Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign Soulmate, Contract, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Sexual, Intimate, Romantic, 
feels so good. Soul contract, please. One for the divine feminine. What is the angel she's healing with? What is the angel that the divine masculine is healing with? Okay. Body care. Take care of yourself, girl. Get your rest. Right? Balance. So important to keep yourself in balance. That's I N balance, not I M not imbalance, right? So important to make sure you're sleeping, you're resting, you're eating well, you're exercising, you're hydrating, as well as I have to say a little uh, manicure, pedicure, facial and massage that can go, eh, it won't take you all the way home, but it can be helpful, right? Uh, make sure you're doing your yoga or you're running, even well, where I am, I'm looking out the window now, it's snowing. It's like, I am not going to go running, even walking in this weather right now. But I can, even from my couch, do a little something, something, that it is self-love and self-care. And you know, mystics, we can just be like, in the ethers with the divine all day long. That's why they cloistered us. <laughs> <laughs> nunneries and monasteries and ashrams oh my right so make sure you are taking care of you getting your three squares even if you know it's the same thing over and over and over because we're mystics and we don't have time for all that shit all the time right so what we got for the divine masculine the angel that he is healing with is the angel of manifestation so it might very well be that this is manifesting very very quickly oh they just showed it to me are they even going in the same direction Yes, they sort of are, except one away, one toward. Remember the shadow side of the seeker, uh, inability to commit to a path once found. Feels like, oh, things got real and might be moving along, but that this is the manifestation of something that they wanted. You know, what happens when you get what you want? <laughs> Yes, there might be the thing, well, it's not the way I expected it. When the fuck does that ever happen for anybody where they get exactly as visualized? Oh, look, there it is on my vision board. Exactly that thing, right? Never. No one gets it like that. And if you do, you should be doing readings, right? Um, but there is a manifestation here. And, you know, I can't take my eyes off Hecate here, one of my goddesses that I've had since childbirth watching over me goddess of decisions goddess of the crossroads but this has to be an emotional or an intuitive and some and of course obviously the emotions are getting away of the deeper intuitive guidance here so maybe it's for the best that seven of swords he is tipping away to kind of uh check this out and perhaps to seek as a seeker what he needs to heal and to move forward the clarity of mind and heart right of mind and heart so that the throat, the, the, the willpower, the choice, the spit, swallow, or chew, right, can make the decision. Because it will be life-changing. This isn't just a choice. This is a life-changing contract. So uh, let's keep going. We're going to pull two cards, one each, for the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, from the Chuck Spazano Love Pack. There are four suits in this deck. The Problem Suit, the Healing Suit, the Luck Suit, and the, uh, and the Grace Suit. Right? Better be. Wrote a book about Grace. Uh, words of Grace from a Professional Witch. Go watch it. Go look at it. Jointhecircle.com. Uh, what we're going to do here is the Voice of the Masters is going to give us one card for each of them, delineating what it is either that they are bringing to the relationship in terms of healing or what they have to heal that they are bringing with them into the relationship, right? Half the deck is the problem suit. So that's going to be, this is what they're healing. They have to heal and look at or are bringing to the relationship to heal. Uh, the other three suits are about the, the the grace, the luck, or the healing that they are bringing to it. Does that make sense? You'll get it. These cards speak for themselves. Nice deep breath. Oh, my masters of of soulmate contracts, please. One card in clarity. Yeah, let's do let's do them both at the same time. I like doing it that way. Please, my masters. Two cards, one for the Divine Feminine, one for the Divine Masculine in this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, Soulmate Contract. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, sexual, intimate, romantic, loving soulmate contract huh, for January 2020, though timeless, please. Sorry, I almost flipped the deck. Uh, one card for the Divine Feminine Mystic, one for the Divine Masculine Seeker. Can you see my eyes are a little mm, about this divine masculine now? Like, I've been there, done that. Okay. 
Well, what she's bringing to the table, to the contract, is happiness. And even though it's a happy couple here, it's happiness within herself. Come on. Come on, she's shooting for the the Ten of Cups. She's going to get it, too, right? I can really see she's going to be there embodying that with a true sense of happiness. Yes, happiness can be circumstantial, but there is a time where just happiness just, like, bubbles up when we're in alignment with the truth of who we are in the present moment. Call it whatever you want, right? Let's look at the Divine Masculine. He's got openness, that's what he can bring to this. So, you know, a seeker has to be open to an extent. Otherwise, what do you seek in the same shit over and over and over again? Which I guess people can do, get stuck in a rut. Um, but then that would go against the inability to commit to a, a path once found. It's like if you keep studying the same thing, right? So in that shadow, yes, that walking away, that, that inability to commit, which literally says the word commit on the card, uh, once they have found this, but an openness perhaps to seeing how things go, but sometimes so open that anything can fall in. Does that make sense? It's an extrapolation of a Terry Pratchett quote, don't let your mind be so um, so open that anything can be put in there, something similar, right? So an and openness and a happiness. I mean, I like this vibe. It's just that Seven of Swords gives me pause. Meow. Leo's. Uh, what we're going to do is ask the higher selves of all involved, though, mine included, uh, what's going on here with the Whispers of Love Oracle. Same thing as before. Nice deep breath. Uh, the higher selves of all involved, mine included, please, two cards. One for the Divine Feminine, one for the Divine Masculine in this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Satisfying, sexual, intimate, romantic, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, soulmate contract for January 2020. Please, what's going on with the Divine Feminine here? What's going on in this contract for the Divine Feminine? And what's going on for the Divine Masculine here? What's going on for him in this contract? Now remember, I'm saying him and her, but it's just party A and party B sounds a little impersonal. You are limitless. See, feeling it for this divine mystic. You are limitless. Recognize this truth. You can do anything you choose to do. Now, I'm going to say, when the mystic connects to the infinite quantum field, you are limitless. We are limitless. We are the limitless that has created self-imposed limitations in order to experience the universe from a different point of view. You can't taste the coffee when you're one with it. Mmm, thank goodness for physical form, right? But to tune to that with this sense of happiness and yet with the card of body care to bring that, I have a feeling this mystic kind of into her, her own healing in some way, particularly if there's this five of pentacles in the recent past that might have been quick but traumatic, might have really gone through a healing challenge and a healing crisis of some kind, bringing her now into the other side of that, of this limitlessness. Very, very lovely card for the Divine Masculine. Sorry, did I just smirk? Yeah, I did. I have a dimple on the side too when I smirk, so it's just a blessing unto all of life. Uh, at the Leo Rising, uh, act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you, so you will always consider them, particularly if... You're on a little bit of a walkabout, love. <laughs> Particularly if you're on the sneak away to figure shit out. Well, you know, take the time to actually act as if they are there with you. Because the thing is, is it's contracted. You're bonded at the soul. You are soul mates, like mates on a ship. You're in the same boat, headed in the same direction. But perhaps one of you is in the bow. One is you in the stern. One is port. One is starboard. Uh, that happens, right? In, in even the best of soulmate contracts, you may not always be on the same page, but you're in the same boat, right? So act as if your partner is here. That's why that circle is like, bitch, bitch, witch, work. We are going to end with one card, and it is the Matt Khan Healing Mantra deck that I love so much. Had so much fun reading these last night. Not everybody got one, because uh, I read from seven, seven different decks, I think, in total. 
So not everybody got from the same decks. But I really loved the, the concept, and, and I don't know if people remembered the mantras, but before I did this, they said, do this one last so that it's the last thing they hear that will tie it all together. And then really, there's only one because the mantra is for the contract itself. So either the Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine, or both can use this mantra to help heal the contract. Cool, cool. That's why it's a contract reading. It's not so much about the people, but it is, you know. Nice deep breath. My ascended masters, the masters of soulmate contracts, please. Because it's like a division. Uh, please, my masters, one card in clarity. For this divine feminine mystic and this divine masculine seeker in this leo collective sun moon rising venus signs soulmate satisfying intimate relax intimate romantic intimate sexual happy healthy wealthy wise soulmate contract please for january 2020 what is the mantra that will since they are here to help each other heal what is the mantra that will help them heal each other themselves the contract itself here we go oh one side of this is um, the name of the mantra, the other is the mantra itself, and I will look it up in the booklet because it's tiny, but it's good. All right. Greeting wellness. Greeting wellness. Greeting wellness. The mantra, balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. And bitch, you are infinite. You are limitless. Balance and there's this body care, right? Balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. Balance. Balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. Infinite miracles. Just think of that. Think of that phrase. Infinite miracles. It makes the mind go like that. You're looking that shit up right now. Greeting wellness. G-R-O. Close. Greeting wellness. <clears throat> Balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. When wellness is welcomed, you are taking responsibility for the upkeep and preservation of your body as your sacred vessel of spiritual growth. In balance, you may come to see how endlessly, uh, how endless wanting only creates more things to want. Yeah, this is totally here in, in the Divine Feminine, and it is the angelic gift that she brings to the relationship, to, to the contract. So just to read that again so you keep that in mind. When wellness is welcomed, you are taking responsibility for the upkeep and preservation of your body as your sacred vessel of spiritual growth. In balance, you may come to see how endless wanting only creates more things to want. When operating from patterns of instant gratification, you are likely chasing after happiness that is out of reach as your body remains out of balance. Like a seeker would, once they found something, moving on that instant gratification thing. So in other words, if this is going to take some time, the seeker might be like, well... In the meantime, I got some manifestations, which is fine, but there doesn't have to be the sneaky sneaky. Uh, this is resolved uh, by learning to care for the body physically, emotionally, energetically, and nutritionally. As your life comes into greater balance, you will likely sense true happiness, happiness, uh, not as the end result of specific outcomes, but as the energy created by taking the time to truly care for yourself. Yeah, so so a good chunk of this uh, contract is about balance and body care and nurturance, but not just the physical, although that is very indicated here with the Divine Feminine, but with this openness of mind, openness of heart, and, and the card of the moon here, that the decision for the Divine Masculine. Divine Masculine, if you're the one watching us, the Seeker, you found the contract. You don't have to commit all the way until the universe disappears. You absolutely can say, I am willing to step into this, and I'm going to act as if my partner is with me, because if you do that, <sighs> that heart's going to open and you're going to heal. One last little bit here. This mantra is ideal for cultivating self-love, can't beat it, uh, improving self-worth, and letting go of compulsive tendencies. Am I picking on the Divine Masculine? I'm going to say, if it's a mystic and a seeker, who's going to have the compulsive tendency to move on? Inability to commit to a path once found. Let's give you your overview, please. Magic clap. 
We start with the divine feminine mystic, the shadow attribute, delusional rapport with the divine. Well, understand that. The light attribute revels in intimate union with the divine, so she might very, very well be good on her own. However, uh, the past card here where she's been in this contract has been five of pentacles. There is, she got shook, right? The earthquake, uh, probably fast, but you know, makes a lot of change very quickly. Uh, moving into the three of pentacles, loyalty perhaps to herself more than to someone else, uh, or loyalty to the path, loyalty to the divine, loyalty to the light, etc. Uh, loyalty to her practice, even. Uh, leading her to the Ten of Cups, ecstasy, her Ten Cups overflow, Inanna's house of heaven. So the work has been done, the loyalty put in, at least to her own process, path, and practice, bringing her into that lovely Ten of Cups place, which is the only reason anybody wants to be in a soulmate contract, honestly, in the beginning, is because they believe they will feel that way. Here is her feeling this way, with or without the Divine Masculine. The angels are talking about body care, so I really feel like this greeting wellness card, right, balances the key to a life of infinite miracles. That's a lot, well, it's probably 50-50, but that really does pertain to her, particularly with the masters talking about happiness here, that there's a happiness here that she can have really within herself, but because of her mystical connection, right, her ability to revel in intimate union with the divine, and then what does her higher self add to the party on that one? You are limitless. Recognize this truth. You can do anything you choose to do, and blessed, blessed be for her on that. As we jump over to the divine masculine seeker in the shadow. Inability to commit to a path once found. I mean, I'm feeling that. I know that. I have dealt with that in so many divine masculines, but they were usually twin flames, right? Like, I couldn't give them what they wanted. They couldn't give me what they wanted. This is a soulmate contract, which brings me to the light, that thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. Divine masculines, look at the truth. Look at what's really going on here, even if it's look within yourself. Because in the recent past, right, or at least in the, where he's been in this contract, Nine of Cups really was at the place almost of saying, I do. But then where we are in the present moment here, we've got the card of the moon, Hakate, perhaps an overflowing of an emotions that made him uncomfortable, brought him to a bit of a crossroads, not sure what to do, uh, emotional uh, intuitive confusion, which means the emotions are confusing the guidance of the soul known as intuition. And then with the Seven of Swords, that kind of tiptoeing away, that sneaky away, that uh, stealing yourself away by moonlight uh, into the shadow, just a tricky, sticky thing to do. Uh, not my favorite card in the deck. I don't know if it's anybody's favorite card in the deck, unless it's really about clandestinely seeking truth, right? Seeking help, seeking therapy, seeking counseling, seeking healing with or without uh, the divine feminine mystic in the know. But I'll tell you this, it's not great to hide things from mystics because we feel it. We know something's going on. We're used to dealing with mystery. But if you lie to us, it's really torture because we know something's going on. Looking at uh, the angels here, the gift that he brings is the healing gift of manifestation that perhaps he has the power to really manifest this in the contract to kind of step up to the plate and say, hey, I love you, <laughs> right? But may not be ready to do that. And you know what? You don't want a half-baked cake either. Let him do what he needs to do if it's really about him seeking his healing because it's a soulmate contract. It's going to play itself out somehow. Um, and the masters are talking, there's an openness here, and that's a luck card, right? So that he is lucky in that sense, that his luck comes from being open and saying, all right, well, you know, let me go talk to an emotional uh, process healer, or, because this is emotional, got a lot of water cards going on here for the Divine Masculine, leading up to that Seven of Swords. Um, but the, the higher selves of all involved, Act as if your partner is here when you have someone in your life, or, or whether you have someone in your life or not. Act as if they are with you, so you will always consider them. And that's the thing about considering this uh, divine feminine mystic here. Why? Because the ultimate mantra that help heal this, greeting wellness. So perhaps both of them are on the wellness path, I would hope, uh, feels like she's 
got a bit more of a grip on it where she is, but he might, I don't know, doubt it's for the first time maybe, but is really addressing wellness in sense of a holistic sense of balancing a physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual aspects of life with the mantra, balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. Well, there we have it. Uh, my fellow Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. What a cool contract read. Okay, it doesn't say that things are going to work out for January, but fuck, it's only January. It's the beginning of a whole new decade. But there's definitely an interesting uh, contract going on here, and I have to say, I kind of love the idea of a mystic and a seeker together because the mystic can seek, right? But is the seeker always seeking the mystical? Well, life is a mystery, as I said, cue Madonna. Bless it be Madonna in all her forms, right? <laughs> I mean, all the Madonnas. Uh, long story. I love you all so much. May the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in their soulmate contracts. The happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, delicious kind that they revel in fifth house placements <laughs> that they are. Uh, to grow, to heal, to learn, to become the best they can be, to help each other heal and fulfill their role in the healing of all life in the fulfillment of the divine plan for the well-being of all. And so it is. Thank you so much for watching, my Leos. Please do like and subscribe. Remember, Drunk Tarot, we're going to have fun once I hit 1,000 plus a little bit more because I'm a Virgo. I like the little extra. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed. Hail, farewell, and blessed be.